Hi guys, so let's talk about the combination sounds to you. So you are given a collection of candidate numbers. So this is a array and then there's a target. So you have to find all the unique combination in candidate array. And each number in the candidate can be only used once. So uh, the solution uh, can be, uh, cannot be uh, contain a duplicate combination. So this question be a little bit straightforward. And so here's the solution. So uh, I'm going to talk about how I solve it. So this is a combination array, right? And then basically the array is not sorted, so we have to sort. Sort. So when we know like if the target, if the sum for the path, for the path that I'm adding, if if this is already what, well, this is already greater than target, right? So I can know. Uh, I can. I mean, I can access this current current uh, loop of what, right? Because if the array is already sorted, right? So 1, 2, so 1, 5, 6, 7, 10, right? So just for example, this is what? 1, 1, 2, okay. 1, 1, 2 is okay. It's 4, right? And then if you plus another one, this should be 9, right? So 9 is already greater than 8, right? So we don't have to traverse. We don't have to, we don't have to traverse the rest of the number. For this current current uh, current iteration, so uh, so we can what we can actually like jump to another index. So when I started from here, right? So my second index was started from here. So I will just keep adding, just keep up, keep keep checking if my sum is actually greater than target or not. If this is greater, I'm not I'm not using this one. I'm going to just uh, just keep going on, right? So, um, and this is already what? Uh, one, one, two, five, right? This is already greater than nine. So I don't have to traverse six, seven, ten, ten, right? So I will just move my second index, sorry, the third index, right? Uh, move, move right at one, and then this is one, one, five, so six, seven, right? Seven is still what? Less than target, so I would adding another pointer so th which is greater than eight so i will edit this one and then move my next pointer to here and then check the sum if the sum is actually equal to a target equal to a target so this is a list right if this is equal to a target i'm adding to the list of this right so i'm adding this to this of this right and this is going to be pretty much it right but the problem is that you need the uh, uh you need to know like you visit this uh index or not this is because uh if the uh, if the array is one 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 and target is three right and then you can only return what you can only return one combination because this is actually what this is actually a combination of three but the answer is duplicate right you only need to return one so we can just what we have to know like did we use this index? Did we, did we use this index or this one? Right? We need to know which index we are using, right? So this is pretty much it, right? And then uh, you can actually create a variable called sum or you can actually deduct the number, deduct the target number based on the candidate index. And if the target is actually equal to zero, right? If this is equal to zero, which means Sum is actually the sum is actually equal to target, right? If this is less than, which means sum is greater than the target. So we will just um, just try to do the uh, alternative way, right? So uh, all right, let's start coding. So we will have a global variable list of lists. I'm just going to result, and this one should be what well, new array list. I'm just by like, pushing my uh, answer combination to the list of lists, right? And then my path, so again, should be this linked list in integer. So I'm going to talk about why I use linked list. So linked list, there is a variable, I mean, there's a function called uh, remove last. So when you backtrack the different alternate way, right, the remove last should be easier for you to understand. All right, so uh, the next one, and you need a boolean array visit equal to new boolean and then the land 
length should be 10 data size. I mean, the length, right? 10 data length. All right, so uh, this is going to be pretty much for the, for the creating variable, right? So now we need to sort the 10 data array, right? Array for sort. Right? And again, so when you're sorting the array, this is because we will save a lot of time and also the memory to traverse the uh the non necessary uh variable in the candidate array if we already know our current sum which is actually greater than target for now right so this won't be pretty much it right so we need a helper function right we are trying to create a helper function i'm just calling this name a different variable I mean the algorithm. So I will definitely have this two and also the Boolean array. I'm gonna call this it and also the index. So I will be able to know which index I'm currently located, right? So I'll just call this function for candidate for target for visit. So the index, the index should be starting from zero, right? And then at the end, I will return result, right? So <coughs> this is pretty much it, right? And then start, start, uh, start writing the combination sum. So we know that we only have target in the, in the combination sum to help a function, right? So we already know the sum is actually, it is actually my target, right? So if the target is actually less than zero, right? Uh, we already know like this is not doable and then we return. This is the base case, right? Now, if the target is actually equal to uh, equal to zero, right? This is means sum is actually equal to the target, right? So uh, I will just add my path to the list, right? And I will return, and I try another combination, right? And now I will have to start my for loop and then my index should be what? My i should be what? My starting index, right? And i less than candidate length and i plus plus, right? So uh, this is pretty much it, right? For the traversing rest of the nums, I mean the candidate array uh, inside the for loop. And again, if we visit, then we don't care about it, right? We don't need to use the same number twice, right? And then if so, if you want to catch uh catch the the base case right over here, this is good. But you can also catch the base case right over here. So my current target, if I haven't if I haven't called my recursion function, I can just check is my target minus 10 days 10 days at i position if this is less than zero right i know started from uh, starting uh one one two five six seven ten i know that if i choosing if i choose this three i mean this four index and I, and I already know my target when I when when my target minus five when my target minus five right this is actually less than eight right when I know this is actually less than eight I can what I don't have to traverse this one uh, I mean I don't have to traverse this number and also this one right I can actually break right because I don't have to spend time like traversing uh, non irrelevant uh, numbers in a candidate, right? So I can break. So when I break, I will just keep calling rest of the recursion function, right? And, and I will have another if statement right, right over here, but I'm not talking about this. So if I visit, so and if everything else, if everything else does not, uh, does not continue, does not break, right? I need to know. I need to use this current index, right? So visit at i is equal to true and when you call a recursion function you need to set it equal to set it equal to false because you might be reusing this number in the different combination right 
So again, one one six should be one combination, but you use another one, right? One two five, right? So you probably probably have to reuse the number, but I don't know. So you need to say equal to false, right? So target will deduct the candidates numbers, right? And at some point you need to add a target back, right? So otherwise like you can try traverse result for combination. So target is actually represent my sum. But uh this is pretty much it, right? So when we when we uh, set the visits, when we set the target, we also need to set the path. So it should be what? We need to add a current number, current number to the path and also for the For a recursion case, you need to remove the last one because we we keep appending appending the number appending the candidate number into the link list, right? Link list is what uh, appending to the last one, right? So if I want if I don't want this current index, I will just have to remove the last one. And this is why I use link list instead of array list. So if you use array list, right? I mean only if you're using array list. So. Uh, I'm gonna just call path two, right? And this is array this, and then without changing any index inside the path, path two, right? So path two, you will say uh, delete something called delete, no? Uh, path two dot what? Remove, yeah, path two dot remove, and you you want to remove the last one, right? So path two dot size minus one. This is exactly the same thing for path uh, remove last. You remove the last one inside the path two for the array list. And then for, for the link list, you just have to say remove last. And this this is the same idea, but it doesn't matter which one you use, but I would like to use this one. And then definitely, definitely you need to keep calling your recursion function. So if you do have a candidate, you do have a target. So I don't have to say target minus uh, minus candidate again because I uh, I already deduct uh, the candidate numbers in for the for the target right and then visit just pass in a visit for the index so I'm using the current i for the index right so if I want to jump to another uh, index it should be i plus one right so this is how the second pointer uh combine right so again uh if you are I mean just don't worry about target right now. So just worry about the array list. So if we are starting from here, right? And then and then you definitely know that these two, right? These two does not uh, break the sum continuum, continue, right? So you will you will call your recursion function. So when you call your recursion function, right? This is another pointer, right? And then again, so again, if the if statement does not break the sum continuum, so you call another another recursion function, which is going to be another uh, recursion pointer, and then. So just imagine that two does not actually work. I mean, sorry, how about seven? So seven does not actually work, right? So you will remove the pointer, right? And then you will check for the for the recursion pointer when you recursively back, right? So this is how it is, right? So you will set a visit to uh, for the current index should be false, and then you will add a target. So add a candidate number. So you will recover the target value. And then you also remove the uh, the value inside the path, the link list. All right. So now we haven't uh, do the uh, once in a combination, right? We you can only uh, you can only uh, be used once in a combination. So this is really tricky. So let me start uh, forward. So I so I is the current index you traverse the current current for loop, right? So if you have another iteration for loop, right? This is going to be another for loop. Right, but for the current iteration for loop, right? If if you have one one, right? If you have one one, one one two, right? So you're starting from here, right? And then when you jump to the next one, so this is a this is gonna be a second pointer, right? If you jump to the next one, right? And it, and then you want to know like, does the previous index use it or not, right? I mean, uh, does the previous value? Is equal to the current index value, right? And then for the current i, so this is i, right? And this is index. Why? Because we started from i equal to index, 
and I will just keep a penny, uh, uh, sorry, keep increment, right? And index is always fixed number, so this is how it is, right? You distinguish the index and R for the different position inside the array. So uh, if the index, sorry, if the I is greater than index, so we know this is two different values. And also, the, the candidate at I is equal to candidate at I minus one, right? So we know this is the same value, but we haven't checked uh, check what? Uh, check the digits. So again, right? Uh, if you want to use if you want to use a variable like this, right? So one, 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 and then target is actually equal to three, right? And then you can only return one combination, right? And then well, you definitely store this combination into the list of lists, which is result, right? But when you check, when you check another combination, just imagine this one, right? You need to know you are not able to do this. This is because um, they are actually the same value, but also what? This is, you start your another, you start your another uh, starting index, right? You start your another starting index, which means what? Your previous, your previous one. So you set your previous one, previous index to false already, right? So, so it was initially true, it was initially true for the red box. Let me, let me erase. So it was initially true for the red box, right? And then now you already know you pass into the what? Pass into the list of lists, right? Now you started another box, right? Started another box. But when you started another box, you need to set what? Set to false, right? This is how I did it, set to false. So again, everything will be uh, brand new, right? And then this is your index. So you will definitely need to know if you if your current value, if your current value is actually equal to previous value. And also the and also the visits uh, at, at previous index is actually equal to the false. And also this is this is i. This is i, this is index. And also i is greater than index, greater than index. You are actually uh, doing the same combination stuff. So you will actually what you need to detect and visit at i equal to false. I mean i i minus one. I minus one equal to false. So you will be able to what continue, right? You don't want to use the current index. Current index, right? So this is gonna be pretty much a solution. So this is a little bit long. And I need to check. Okay, I don't have error. And then submit. All right, so I passed the test case. So let's talk about the time and space. So for the time, uh, the sorting is unopened, unrepresented of the candidates array. So unopened should be pretty simple. But the problem is the combination uh, recursion function, right? So again, so this should be what? Uh, for, for the worst case, I'm, talk, I'm talking about the worst case. So for each index, you need to visit. And you either what? You either add or not add, right? So it's, you have two ways for every single index. How many variables you have? You have n variable. And how many array you are traversing? You have n array, right? I mean, you have, you have n times to traverse the array, right? So n times two to n. So I'm going to talk about why is n. So just imagine you have first for loop, right? This is n. And then you either adding or not adding, right? So uh, again, this is adding or not adding. I mean, just based on what? Just based on this, right? You check, right? And then again, why is two to n? Since you have two way, right? Two ways adding or not adding. And then you keep calling your combination recursion function. And this is all, all of them. So two to all of them inside the all of them, right? So we're starting the yeah, we're starting the folder right over here, but we are using the one combination sum two couple function. Alright, for the for the space. This is a space, this is a space, and I would say this is gonna be pretty much all of n. So 
all the space is not actually uh, it's not actually a problem you can actually know like you don't when you talk about the space complexity this is not a problem right the problem is you how do you explain your time complexity and this is gonna be pretty much it so I will just copy my time and space complexity and then this is the solution and if you feel uh, helpful subscribe and I will see you next time